Welcome to Cosmic Channels! I'm Braden, and the Cosmic Lines are now open just before we take on the first call. Um, just a couple things. I have to quickly apologize to our first caller last week, Edith Fedith. I was having extreme technical difficulties that I was working through during the call. So during the call, I was half listening, and then because of the audio issues, uh, I couldn't save the call to use on the pod version. Um, so my apologies to Edith Fedith. Um, you know, I, I hate that that happened. Uh, as always, uh, Cosmic Channels is your show. I just host it. Um, ways to sort support the show. You got Super Chat or the best way is the PayPal here. Uh, we're going to have a little stockholder, shareholder meeting after the show today to determine uh, what our next move is uh, to grow this show. But we need the help of you fans. So make sure to spread the word of Cosmic Channels. And if you got a story or you got a friend that's got a story, if you got a friend of a friend that's got a story, uh, get them to call one 703 zero four two four uh and just like that we already have a caller on the line this is nathan uh from cincinnati ohio he was blowing up the lines eight minutes early and uh, so i let him left him on hold here uh nathan are you there hello Braden. hey long time uh, listener first time caller right on man how's Great it going to be in the show oh thanks for uh thanks for calling in thanks for you know what a lot of people don't know like if you want that, if you want that first, if you want to be that first caller, you know, five minutes early. Five minutes early is usually the key. Eight minutes early, there's a long. We were just sitting here. He was just sitting here listening to me do stuff. Five minutes early, usually you can sneak on and get the first call because I'm already in here. Uh, what do you got for us tonight? Well, I got a really awesome two experiences I wanted to share. Beautiful. Um, and both of them happen with the same entity, so that makes it kind of wild. Once, yeah, that makes it one story, uh, so we can. It's it's definitely something. It's it's two instances that I have firsthand accounts on. There's numerous others that I don't that are with the same thing, so we know there's something there. So back in the day, uh, back in college, our fraternity had gotten that party house. It had been a family residence before us when we moved in. And, you know, everybody kind of sensed that something was weird when we first got the house, but nobody knew what. That next summer, we really spent time and, I guess, renovated most of it. And this included kind of exploring the attic that we never went into and the basement that the place had. And uh, in doing so, a couple of the guys found a two-foot-tall Christmas teddy bear. Uh, if you can go ahead and picture like nightmare stuff, that's what it was. Yeah, like some some like old button eyes is what I'm pic- picturing. Some little beady black oh, eyes, little little too close With together. A belt. Yeah, yeah, little vest on and everything. And uh, the odd part was the top left part of it looked burnt. So we thought that was kind of weird. And uh, doing a little research, we found out that the house a couple years before we had moved in had a fire. And that's all we could find out about it. So we knew something had happened. Um, My first encounter was over a winter break. Came back to visit, stayed the night in the house, and I was sleeping in the living room area. And they had a big tube TV, and we had ESPN on because why not? Um, And I don't know about you, but ESPN is a 24-hour broadcast on here. You yeah, know what? Fun. And it's it's so funny because ESPN in my head because Andrew said ESPN all the time instead of ESP. When you started saying ESPN, I was thinking mind reading. God, just Andrew's ruined me for that. <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about. Yes, we don't. We, I don't think it's 24 hours here, but we do have like you know TSN and and stuff that you know is the constant highlights. Yeah, I'm familiar. Right. Yeah, cable channels they don't stop. So I woke up in the middle of the night, woke up, and the TV itself was doing nothing but static. So I was kind of thrown off. But after a late night, I had to get up and take a piss. And the only option in the frat house was to run out to the backyard for guys. So do what you do. Went out behind the shed. I come back in, and I noticed what sounded like someone in our game room. And it was really odd to me because there were only two other guys staying in the house at the time. One was in the living room, asleep on the couch. I had been in the recliner. 
So I'm going to check it out. There was no one there. Yeah. Now, I step out of the room, and as you step out, you have a direct line of sight down the hallway to the kitchen. And in the kitchen, we've got the little bar area. It's got the containers that we put our hooch in and solo cups. Yeah. And half of the stack of solo cups lifted without disturbing the others underneath and just dropped to the ground. Like a fat stack. Yeah. So like, so how many were, how, like how, how tall, how tall are these solo cups? Well, it was at least like a 10 cup stack. So is the stack, like it was a half stack. is it sitting, is it sitting upside down? Or are they sitting right, right side, right side up? You know what I mean? Like yeah, they're sitting open side down. Open side down. And so just half of them just lift off, boom, and hit the floor. Lift up, and it's, it looks like someone picked them up. Like, they don't shoot off. Like, they come up and yeah. then just drop to the ground. Yeah. Okay. So I'm like, okay, this is freaky. I'm disturbed. I go back in the living room. My buddy that had been asleep is now awake, and ESPN is back on the TV. And I said, hey, man, did you what, – what happened? Did you hear that? And he goes, dude, what are you talking about? Where did you go? And I said, did you hear the cups? And he goes, no, there's been nothing. And he gets up and looks into the kitchen and sees the solo cups just all over the floor. And we both kind of freaked out and stayed up all night that night. But that was just kind of a little intro. All right. So just before you get into your next one, I just want to add a couple of questions cool. because instantly I'm always trying to think of like, okay, can we, is there an easy way? Like, was there a draft? Was it a windy night? Could there have been two windows open? Like, can we eliminate that? Or what, is that a possibility? I, the back door could have been cracked, but there's no draft that would have been made. We've uh, basically sealed all the doors shut with renovation paint. At and that point. the only other thing from, were you using the cups at all? Like, were these like, you know, somebody in the chat no. saying like beer pong cups. Okay. Cause what I was thinking in my no, head is that maybe they were general party cups. Cause I was thinking maybe there was some liquid. Cause I was thinking if, if like the breeze hit them and they had some liquid that they weren't sticking, but if they're, you think if they were a solid stack that the whole thing would just tip over, not lift off some, it's like they have no weight to them. So that's really fucking strange. Right. Yeah. No weight, nothing in them. Yeah. It could have, but like the fact that only half of them moved, it got me. Yeah, that would definitely that, that little, would definitely that would definitely give me the heebie jeebies for sure. Oh yeah. I never slept there again. So I, I made sure to always make it back after any parties or anything else. I wasn't risking it. But my other one was the same house and it was probably a year later. Um friends and I had gone out to the bars now that we were of age. And on the way back we were gonna stop at the house, see a couple of the guys that lived there hang out for the post party, you know? Yeah. And we get there and we go upstairs to where the bedrooms are. And it's basically just a very simple four bedroom on a hallway. They all face each other with a bathroom at the end on the middle. Yeah. And uh, so I go into the room. My buddy goes, hey, I'm going to go to the bathroom real quick. He jumps down and I'm sitting down in the room. I've got two other friends, both of their girlfriends. One of them is holding on to a four foot piece, kind of tips back towards himself. Yep. And uh, one of the other guys is playing Halo. And as I'm sitting there, all of a sudden, everyone stops talking. Halo, it's online multiplayer, is frozen. And the guy that's holding the four foot piece, it starts to tip away from his hand, oh. like away from him. And I'm kind of, I'm the only one looking around, moving at all. And I'd say it's probably two seconds. Everybody comes back to life. The game comes on. He grabs the neck of it before it falls. And I'm kind of looking around. And my other buddy steps into the doorway and says, hey, I think it's time to go. Oh, that's so fucking... So I got up. So hold on. Like, we both left. Just, I just want to unpack that one part here. So for a second, for like whatever two mississippis time froze except yeah. you and the, this four foot piece are the only thing that you notice movement and everyone else was just perfect standstill no sound no nothing no nothing the halo wasn't moving like nothing weird just that and the four foot piece tipping back to it like set back on its base and then then your friend and, comes in then what yeah so he comes in from out in the hallway says it's time to go 
And I know that I felt funny. I know he's got a look of just terror on his face. So I get up and we leave. We get in the car, drive away. A couple minutes later, I look at him and I say, what just happened? And he said, did you see it? Oof. And, and, and that's, again, I, I get chills asking that, like talking about it. And I said, no, I, 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 I was in the room. What are you talking about? And he said, I came out of the bathroom. I passed the bedroom that had the fireplace that we are pretty sure the bear came from. He said, I passed that and I felt someone brush past and like bump into me. Oh, that's and when funny. that happened down the stairs that go downstairs, there's a landing and a fire escape door. And one window pane on like a four pane window is busted out. But we have a curtain over it. He said the curtain, both bottom corners pulled back came together like a hand was holding it in the middle of them. And that middle piece went out the window. Jesus. And that's when he came to get me. And that's when time unfroze. That is terrifying. So, yeah. And and so those are just and your so, two experiences that you've had, but this house has had a plethora of things going on. Oh yes. Yeah. Those are my two personal that I experienced. We had uh, a couple friends of ours, uh, they're twins. Their mother is very Pacific Islander heritage yeah. and very superstitious. Uh, the first time she came to visit, she wouldn't even step off the sidewalk to like approach the house. Weird. She said she was not going into our house. It, it's, it's, it's interesting. Cause I'm like, it doesn't seem, it doesn't seem like your accounts, like those two anyways, I, I'm sure you've no more or anything. So you could kind of weigh in this, but like, does this seem nefarious to you or is it just so creepy? Like what, what's the reasoning of that you want to get out of there so bad? Like do you get a bad feeling of it? Nefarious. It is. Um, from what others have explained, those that spent time living there explained a lot at night you'd see in what sounds like little kid shadows moving across the door frames. Yeah. Um, so we have this, we're, we're pretty sure that the family that lived there lost a child in the house fire. Oh, that's true. And it's her. Um, but everyone describes it as a little girl and that she's never malicious, but she's very playful or likes to make her presence known to like one or two people at a time. But never is never really causing any, like those are the ones ah, it's so tough. Cause it's like, you know, do you really want to pay that thing attention? What if it's some sort of like poltergeist thing where it's like the more attention you give it, you know, the more the more power you kind of give into it. Um, what are your thoughts? What do you think? What do you think that thing is? What's at that house? I, I think so. At first, before we found the bear, I mean, there was just a presence. Nobody ever saw anything or experienced anything. We just all kind of felt something there. Yeah. But after the bear came out, people saw it, interacted. I mean, it stayed on the front porch for almost the entire semester as like a mascot for the house. Yeah, the, the old that's definitely mascot. You know, you give it, you feed it your energy. Yeah, interesting. And I wonder if it's like, was that just curious, like from your knowledge, and you you might not have knowledge on this, but was that time when that thing was out on the deck and everyone was kind of paying it homage, homage kind of thing? Like, was that the time where it was most <laughs> active? It, no, that's when it all started. Oh, it just started. So was, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm kind of curious. We all had it and paid its respect. Yeah, yeah, I'm kind of curious if it's like that. If that pushes it, uh, f like f further. You know what I mean? Like gave it some more power to do, free, do the freeze time and stuff. That that's truly wild accounts, dude. Uh, some of those the like gives gives each one. yeah gives me the shivers. It's like it's creepy. So why well, you like the, do you do you think it do you think that we've heard is People talk about the paranormal. There's there's time dilations or yeah. manipulation when it's really strong and really happens. And I, I definitely felt that way. I I for sure believe that there was a little girl there. Hmm. Interesting. I don't think she was ever trying to harm anyone. But why? I like why? Was, just she could ma maybe just targeted two couple people at a time. Like that's all. Yeah, it seemed like two or three. And you know, like I I don't know. I mean, looking at my son, the way he interacts with adults. It's only a couple at a time, so I almost wonder if that's that child instinct. Oh, that's a, that's an interesting point. Like that's all. It, that's interesting. 
So maybe that would point to yeah, child, yeah. some sort of child spirit lingering or something. Any any do you know any history yeah. of the house? Is there anything any history of like you know a child passing away or something happening in that house? Just from the the house fire that was there, um, that because it was a child, there's no like actual public record of a. Yeah, so it's hard to hard to track down their death. Yeah, um, but it does mention that it was a like a full house fire, it's a local legend, in the basically. middle of the night in the winter. Yeah, um, definitely local legend for that place, but it is it is creepy. They've all since moved out, and other people have yeah, taken over. I don't, I don't blame. Them. <laughs> I would do the same. Uh, Nathan, thank you so much for the first call tonight. That was an awesome one. Um, I let you go too because the two were tied and they were very interesting. So thank, hey, thanks so much uh, for calling in. Yeah, thanks, Brandon. It was great talking to you, man. Perfect. Great. I will listen to the rest. All right, take care. <laughs> uh, just an awesome call from uh, Nathan from Cincinnati. There, that's uh, truly terrifying. Interesting, you know. Uh, what compels a spirit to do that if they're doing that? Like. Is it just for attention? It's it's interesting. But just like that, the lines are open. one 703 Uh this is your show. So I need a, I need a caller. I need someone calling in uh to tell me a story. Um until we get a caller, I'm going to <laughs> pitch you some stuff. Uh, you know, help support the show. This show, um, what I want to use all the money we raise from the show is is to upgrade this show so every dollar that is donated um is going to be used to upgrade the cosmic lines upgrade the uh streaming services um so that we can stream more places get some more eyes on it um but we'll we'll talk about all that afterwards um i'm waiting for a call 1-833-703-0424 i was hoping to get another call right away because i do have a short story but it is a la- it's a little bit of a lengthy one. So um, I'm going to get into that now. And then um, hopefully if I get a call, I'll just put you on hold while I finish reading this. Um, this is from uh, Andre. It says, time for us to meet. I'm Andre. Uh, Lennox on Patreon. Portuguese 3387. Born. Fuck yeah. English is not my main language. Hopefully, Braden will perform amazingly uh, when reading. Uh, Spoiler alert. The following story is real. Thus, I agree. We can all see things, and I imagine stuff. Brains are quite complicated, and I won't be upset if you, my favorite bum casters, find any kind of explanation to these experiences I had. I do accept other opinions and for sure jokes. All right, so... Yeah, short story but lengthy. Anything I read that's short is lengthy. I got to sound these things out. Uh, So let's get into it. This is the experience that unlocked my brain. To see further. To believe there is much more to this life. To actually see things in different ways. Still to this day I know I did see something. But I am always trying to debunk myself on this matter. So I have a way of presenting plausible arguments on why I did see that, why I do not need to create stories, and why as an eight-year-old I had a pretty grown brain. Awesome summer... (laughs) Uh, You know what? Fuck it, I'll take the call. Cosmic Channels, you're on the line. You interrupt the story, but that's okay. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hello? Hello? Interesting. All right. I think they we lost them instantly. Okay. Well, uh, hopefully they call right back. Uh, let's go back to this story here. You come on. You can't interrupt the short story and then uh, and then just hang up. All right. Awesome summer night. I was about eight or nine years old. I was already. It was already past nine p.m. The location was Azores, BA. Um, Air Force Base number four in Azores, Terracia Island. I'm guessing that's in in uh, Portugal. 
Um, it was just a normal happy summer night playing footy with my friends. Our parents were all at the sergeant's club just having beers. Our moms were also there, and we were having the times of our lives. So either I was thirsty or wanted something to eat. I went to look for my parents. Long story short, my dad's wallet's at home, so he asked me to go get it. From the sergeant's club to my house is about a minute walk. As I'm walking out of my house with my dad's wallet, I go past the mini market behind the sergeant's club where mom worked during the daytime. So as I was walking past, I see a shadow. Hat, big coat. It's pretty weird. It's summer, but who gives a fuck? What the fuck? As soon as I go past the shadow, I realize there was no volume to it. It was just a shadow, smoking a cigarette. I never ran so much in my life. Guess what? My dad and his mates uh, started laughing after I told them. Funny little kids. My mates made fun of me after I told them. Obviously, as kids and professional explorers, we went there. Sadly, nothing was there, and my brain just got into stupid mode. Uh, not a good thing. Happily, people don't care about this stuff, and I suppose no one remembered the next day. Well, for me, it's a different story. 22 years later, still in my head, like a bloody equation I have to solve. So this happened only because of my curiosity. Was just randomly talking with my mom during dinner and I told her I was looking for stuff about shadow people and that I did see one when I was little then she starts crying I asked her why is she crying mom tells me granddad told her something similar when she was little also granddad passed away when she was 19 so she gets pretty upset when talking about him so mom tells me that granddad on a few occasions in a space of a year while going to work on his bicycle in the 1950s or 60s, was stopped by someone who would say, Excuse me, sir, can you light my cigarette, please? It's told Granddad made uh, that bicycle look like a sports bike till one day he got effed up or he got fed up and stopped. This time, the shadow figure was legs crossed and not touching the floor. He was actually hovering above the floor. The figure simply vanished when Granddad approached and years went by. And one day when my granddad was talking to my nan, was taking my nan home after a date walk, he saw another figure leaning on a tree. After he left nan, he tried to approach the shadow, but it vanished. I asked mom if granddad was a drinker, only because Portuguese, especially in that time, were hardcore drinkers. And there you go, trying to find a plausible reason. But my mom said he was not a drinker and only a smoker of cigarettes. Granddad did not tell any other stories of shadow people, but there are some creepy stories I can share later. Just wanted to focus on this particular experience. My research took me to an idea that I feel some people might disagree. Basically, most people see shadow figures as a bad thing. And I can understand. Since some monsters of some sort, and it occurs during sleep. But me, I only saw a shadow of a man wearing a fedora and a coat. In no way I ever felt that it was going to harm me. I only felt the shiver when I went past it. Bloody hell, no volume. There was not a normal explanation. I just reacted, run. Obviously, I had to run to my parents, adrenaline at peak levels, but I wish I didn't. From what my mom told me, Granddad felt the same, afraid, curious, and amu amused. During my amateur research, I crashed into many forums and all sorts of information talking about bad shadow figures. And do not let that do not let you wake up pretty different from what i had then i found someone from brazil that had a similar experience a figure no volume like it's 2d with a fedora hat a coat smoking a cigarette does not interact with you just watches you and the same mixed feelings my opinion i did really see something also tried to reason with myself since i am older now just tried to debunk myself to this day it's stuck here uh no more research material Glad I could share with open-minded people that are able to think openly and hopefully will listen to your opinions. If not, glad I could share. Keep it up. You guys are getting to the top of podcasting. And for me, you are the top of theories and conspiracy pods. That's from uh, Andre, uh, a.k.a. Lennox. Um, yeah, I mean, that's uh, people in the chat are always saying uh, Lou Bega, and that's 100% a Lou Bega call. Um, you know, we've, we've talked about Hatman before, but it's weird that those... Because I've told my experience of with the shadow person when I was awake. 
and it stuck with me and i know like people say oh maybe you were sleeping i was like no i know i, I wasn't asleep yet i hadn't gone to bed um i wasn't sleeping so it's it's i always find that so interesting when people also have shared those experiences because like i have i know nothing it opened a door at my house it was tall it was like it was a silhouette that was it just a dark silhouette um i have no idea what it was but creepy thank you andre for writing that in uh i need a caller one 833 7030 um call in you humming han call in maybe the lines are broken i need someone to call in just to test them you guys got a theory you want to talk about you got a ghost story you got uh you got a dream you want to discuss i'll, I'll take one dream a week um but uh go ahead call one 833 uh, is that the number zero four two four? Um, and let's call in people. Come on, this is a fan driven show. I can't do it. I can't do it without you guys. So please, uh, someone call in with your story if you're sitting there listening. I'm in on. Now's your chance. One eight three three seven zero three zero four two four. Someone call in to make sure the lines work. Maybe I heard a weird beep and now I'm worried that something's wrong with the line. So uh, you know what? I uh, I could use I could use some help. So. Uh, Fuck you, call. You guys know what to do. Um, I do have another uh, write-in story, but I wanted to save that for next week. So I'm just sitting here, uh, sitting here waiting for a call. I mean, not much else I can do. Someone call and make sure the lines are working. There we go. Look at that. There it is working. Cosmic Channels. What's up? This is Agent Anderson from hey, Santa Rosa, hey, hey. California. Hey, thanks for saving the day, Agent Anderson. Um, yeah, no problem. People, people love people. You know, the reception from your call last week was pretty good. So, uh, what do you got? What do you got for us this week? I was just kind of winging it. Um, well, first of all, I think some people get nervous calling in. They're they're kind of worried, or they have stage fright, or whatever. So, my advice to them: if you're worried about calling in. All you got to do is picture Braden in his underwear, yeah. and then all your nervousness will just fall away. You'll be fine. And even better, you, picture you don't have, underwear to, you don't have you to picture it because I am, in fact, in my underwear. <laughs> just We need the poo in it over here. So, uh, you know, it's, it's a, um, it's, it is a weird phenomenon because even I have talked to so many people on the podcast. I've interviewed people. I've been guests on other shows. Um, God damn, I call into the radio station. It's like I'm, I've got PTSD. I'm like shaking. I'm like, did I win the prize? Like, it's just absolutely, uh, <laughs> it's just wild. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it, you don't have to be nervous. Um, when the lines are free, yeah. call. Um, Agent Anderson, what's your, what, what do you think's your favorite? What's your favorite UFO story? What do you think? What's your favorite My one? My favorite, the there, one I that, mean, there's so many good ones, but one of the ones we did recently is the Kolaris incident. Um, I think you guys did that one too a while back. Yeah, quite a while ago. So it was in, yeah, and what I liked about this one is give, that give, give it the has quick, give the, give the quick summary. Evidence. Give the quick summary for the listeners here. Well, there. This is the the chupa, the chupa chups. So yeah. when you're looking at translations, it says the you know the lollipop UFOs, <laughs> but <laughs> there were people in like a rural part of brazil who were getting attacked not just seeing ufos but people all over this region all over the Calaris, the area it's like in the northern part people were being attacked they'd be hit by a beam of light they would be paralyzed and then when the beam of light left they would have these two little marks on them and they would feel like something was being taken from them uh, some of them had missing time but what makes this such a great case is that while the UFO wave was happening, or the flap, or whatever you want to call it. While it was happening, the military actually sent a task force out there to investigate, and they stayed for a while, and they took like 16 hours of video. They took tons of witness statements. They took audio. They took photographs. And you can find – I was not able to find any of the video, but you can find a lot of the pictures online and a lot of the reports and a lot yeah. of the you know, witness was, statements uh, and stuff. I mean, op it was a, like Operation Plate. From what I remember, yeah, uh, and that just because yeah. of where they 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 actually like went in because it was they were just these poor villagers were just being absolutely terrorized continuously. Yeah. And people died. Yeah, 
people died after and some people were, would be paralyzed for like 15 days afterwards it was wild and we have military documentation this is not just some villagers who were making stuff up this was thousands of people who saw this and we have military documentation the military was there until the commanding officer in charge of the operation until he had a ufo encounter and then after that they peaced out and then they still investigated it but they they got rid of their permanent encampment there and they would send they would send people to investigate but they didn't have as much of a military presence to the end there but that was a wild one and i think it might be the best evidence as far as you know physical evidence we have you know like i said photographs we have pictures of the witnesses or the victims who you know with the skin marks and stuff there's just there's so much to this one and these days because of google translate we can actually have pretty good um pretty good uh access to the documents the original documents, usually it's yeah. hard to get that stuff yeah the original yeah it's hard to get that stuff sometimes because of translation issues but these days it's not as bad as it used to be well the only thing because i remember from my recollection and it's been a while since i looked into this one one of the things that always kind of like where i like sat on a fence because i am a huge believer in ufos and aliens and I'm a huge believer that the CIA does fucked up things in foreign countries. And and those two things oh, can yeah. exist, but sometimes it's different. Like, so, and I remember thinking this one because no one actually, like, if I remember correctly, there wasn't a lot of like people like having abduction experiences where they're like, they were like being terrorized on the ground. So part of me always thought if this was some sort of advanced tech being tested on people just to see, to see if it worked, but it's, like either way, yeah. whatever this, whatever happened here was terrifying. Like absolutely terrifying for these people. Even yeah, with that people Cal were not happy. Calaris UFO. It's C O L A R E S. C yeah C O L A R E S. Calaris. Col I'm not sure exactly how you pronounce it. They pronounce stuff weird there sometimes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anyone but, who doesn't speak English pronounces English words weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they. I think some some areas they'll they'll say R's like H's yeah, and yeah. you know stuff like that. It's it's pretty. Yeah, it's pretty Dan, funny Dan, sometimes. Dan's really good at. Uh, I think it is Calaris Calaris UFO though. I think you're right. And I, I think that was in 1977. So I don't think that would be outside of the realm of possibility to have some kind of advanced technology that they were developing and experimenting. Right, but dude. you are correct though. The CIA has done some really nasty stuff. We looked into the um, well. What is it? The one um, MK Ultra. Oh, it's and insane. they were doing ex they, they were doing experiments on mental patients, like people who would go in for anxiety or for schizophrenia. And this one lady I read about, they were able to completely wipe her memory to where she forgot everything. She forgot language skills. She forgot her name. She forgot her family, her husband, everything. She was just wiped clean, like a clean slate. They were it, doing... It's absolutely insane. They were doing so much fucked up stuff. Like, my personal favorite is Operation Midnight Climax, where they were scooping... Oh, yeah. They were scooping... Gentle, they basically owned a brothel. The CIA bought a brothel. And then, yeah. like, guys would come in with wives and businesses and stuff looking for, you know sex and then they would get blackmailed and drugged <laughs> like while well, you're doing this and yeah. they just basically just watch through people to see what would happen and they knew these people wouldn't do anything about it because they're like what are they going to do we'll tell them they were coming to a brothel to cheat on their wives it's a perfect, the perfect yeah they had the perfect little fucking plan go there's so many i mean operation sea spray they fucking killed people uh in the states yeah with uh venereal disease like the worst no the worst utis you could possibly imagine that actually led to deaths in some people straight up caused by uh the cia <laughs> wild yeah they've they've done all kinds of nasty stuff and there's a lot of stuff that people suspect them of but nobody can really prove like certain assassinations and things like that but yeah that stay away from the cia man yeah yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> don't go don't, anywhere near them. yeah don't be in their yeah. bad books don't be trying to so I, run under a communist party in a third world country because <laughs> you're in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There, yeah. There's a couple of different ways to get on the bad side, but I, so I have a couple other things I was thinking of like, all right, if I call in next week, what can I talk about? Uh, one of the things, so I ran across so every once in a while, I run across some strange news stories and I thought that you might appreciate this one. So here's the, here's the headline. And you, you might not believe this is a real headline, but trust me, it is. It's from USA Today. The headline is, Attorney Suspended 
for pooping in a Pringles can, leaving it in victim advocates' parking lot. So, well, I, <laughs> apparently, I mean, come on, <laughs> was it an emergency? I mean, we've all like, listen, I haven't even used a Pringles can before. I haven't even done given that courtesy. Like, there was nothing around. I would have if I had it. Like, so, like, how bad? Like, you know what I mean? Like, we're all going to paint this guy with a bad brush, but, like, we don't know. What level of emergency well, is this? Well, he he threw it at uh, a parking lot where, <laughs> you know, people that were, were in a okay. court case that he was against. And his excuse was that it was just sort of his hobby to poop into a Pringle can and just sort of toss it around from his car. That was sort of a <laughs> prank that he pulled, I guess. is what That was his defense, but... The judge didn't buy it, so he was kicked out, probably disbarred. I don't know. Oh, yeah. But I just that was just absolutely hilarious to see that on a somewhat major outlet. Yeah, I you mean, know, sometimes you see some really wild stories. <laughs> it's uh, it's it's interesting. Like I, I was gonna give him the benefit of the doubt till he was throwing it around. Uh, then it's like ah, that's yeah, a bad yeah. luck. <laughs> um, so uh, hey, Agent Anthony, thank you again for calling in. Plug your show before you go. Yeah. All right. Uh, my show is All Things Strange. You can find it wherever you get podcasts. And uh, everybody, call in. Don't be afraid. Braden's yeah. a super nice guy. He will. Yeah. He'll take care of you, man. He will yeah. help you answer questions and lead you in a good conversation. We Don't can, be afraid. We can breathe through it together. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> all right. Have fun. Thank you, buddy. Peace out. <laughs> Bye. Uh, and just like that, the cosmic lines are back open. That's one eight three three seven zero three zero four two four. Um, this is driven by your guys's call. So if you got a weird story, you've got a weird headline, you got a uh, conspiracy theory you want to talk about, you got a little alien tidbits you want to get off your chest, you've got some encounter stories, Bigfoot, cryptids, ghosts. Uh, I want them. 1 833 The lines are open. Fuck you, call us. Let's go. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, Agent Anderson's a beauty. Uh, people in the chat, go check out All Things Strange. Guy's a top shelf beauty. He drove across California to pick up these hats for us. I'm wearing this hat because of Agent Anderson. Um, we got screwed on shipping, and Agent Anderson saved the day. So we're eternally grateful to that guy. Friend of the show, always. Um, all right. Well, if no one else is going to call, I got another story here. Let me pull up here. Um, pull this one. All right. Okay. So I can't say this person's name. Um, all right. So this one, I'll give last second. Anyone, come on. 1-833-703-0424. Uh, I mean, if you're nervous, if you're nervous about calling, you want to write into the show, you can always do that. Um, send it into, uh, cosmic channels podcast at gmail.com. Just put in the subject line, uh, fan st submission, fan story, and I will read it live on air. Uh, and, and in the podcast version, I had some little, uh, music and, and, and stuff to it. So uh, without further delay, uh, this is from uh, Jason Bourne. Uh, my name is Jason Bourne uh, due to not wanting to be named. Uh, can't get enough of the show. Look forward to listen every week. Now I know from episodes long ago that you wanted alien abduction stories. Well, I thought that it's time for everyone to hear my story. I've only told two people this. One was my wife and my best friend, who is also a fan of the show. The dates of the abductions were between 2001 and 2006. I lived in North Carolina in the suburbs of our town in Hendersonville. My bed was on the back wall where I was looking out the front bedroom window when laying down. My first abduction was in 2001. When I woke up, which is unlike me due to the fact I'm a deep sleeper, I seen three little greys outside my window, which none was the same height. The left one was the shortest, then the middle one being the tallest by about five inches, and the other one on the right being in between them. After stating, after staring back at them for what seemed like forever, I suddenly passed out and woke up in a bright-ass room laying on a metal bed. Light was so bright that every metallic-looking wall was reflecting the light, which made the room have no darkness to it. I only could open my eyes and look around. My body couldn't move at all, even though I wasn't strapped down to the table. Next thing I know, a tall gray walked into the room and started inspecting me. I could never remember if they did anything to me other than just look me over. 
but I think they let you remember what they want you to. The tall gray left the room and the next thing you know, I'm passed out again, waking up on my bed the next morning. The second time I was abducted was when I was 10-ish. It was similar to the first time. Other than my bed being moved to the other corner, uh, which when I felt a presence, I sat up and looked out the same window. When I woke up on the table again, after they were done checking on me, they let me get up and walk around the ship. It was full of doorways and long hallways. When I got to the end, of, when I got to the end a door opened. It was the entrance to the command center. It was nothing but a big room full of buttons and screens, but no windows. There were a couple of greys working up there, some tall and some little ones. After looking around for a bit, I got escorted back to the room, and after entering the room, I passed out, and next thing you know, I'm back at the house waking up the next morning. It took a while to remember what happened. Uh, later, it all started coming back to me. Now, the most recent thing that happened to me was in 2010, when I moved back to West Virginia. It was Friday night. My brother and I were on our way back home from skateboarding and hanging out. We lived in the middle of nowhere on top of a mountain. It was around 11 o'clock at night. We were heading up the hill to an intersection at the top of the hill. I noticed a big craft looked as big as a football field and the darkest black color to it. Flat on the bottom, flat on the bottom, flat on the sides and rounded corners with no sound. Now what was strange is that it wasn't moving fast, probably around 10 miles per hour or less. It was just hovering over the tree line, which was about 50 to 70 feet tall. I'm freaking out in the passenger seat saying to my brother, holy shit, did you see that? My brother replied, see what? While I'm having my heart racing on what I saw, I do believe it was the ship that I was on. It was headed down the ridgeline to my house and I thought it was coming back for me, but I noticed I wasn't alone or just let me know I'm not crazy. But when we made the corner onto the road I lived on, it was gone. Uh, sorry it's so long, but I had to get this out. I didn't tell this story to people because I didn't want them to think I'm crazy. I've only told two people this. You can think what you want, but I rarely have dreams and I know the difference. I thought, why not just tell the best podcast around to tell it? Uh, keep up the awesome work. That is fucking terrifying. I mean, I got to... I'm going to reply to this guy. I got to get this guy on the, on the show. I want to like, I'll, I'll blur his voice. Uh, I want to hear this live. This is insane. Um, that's exactly the tree line thing reminds me of like what we just talked about on, uh, alien theorist theorizing. We were talking about the, uh, the Exeter incident, right? Where they were, this thing was like hovering around the trees, just like that. That's a phenomenal, that's terrifying. Um, I want to know more like this. These are the stories I love. I love getting these stories, but they're so frustrating because I'm like, I have questions. Like, have you ever done hypnotic regression? Like, have, have you had any of these other issues? Like, do you have any weird marks on your body? Like, I've got so many questions that we can't get answered. But um, thank you, Jason Bourne. I know your real name. I'm going to reach out to you um, to see if we can't talk about this further. Um, but thank you so much for sending that in um and sharing it with us you've now told a lot more people um but that's okay i mean we got to share these things we got to get these stories out there because your story might um get someone else inspired to tell their story and their account maybe they have a very similar one to you so thank you uh jason Bourne, for sending that in again if you want to write in if you're if you're feeling nervous about calling and you want to write in you can write your stories to cosmic channels podcast at gmail.com and i'll read it live on the air but the Cosmic Lines are back open, one 803 Come on, it's, seven, it's 6.44. we got 15 more minutes. I got, I got no more stories to read, so this is up to you. This is uh, fan-driven. Uh, I want your story, so please call in, one uh, 803 um, and I want to hear a story. We sit around. Uh, let's check the chat here. Um <laughs> Um, yeah, people are saying, you know, we've all emergency pooped in a Pringle scan. I've never had a Pringle scan available, but if, you know, if it was an emergency, 100%. Um, Zapal, have you called in? You know, I got people saying, call in, call in, but uh, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for a story, you know, and any story. You've seen a ghost? You think you've seen a ghost? You think you've seen a cryptid? 
if you want to talk about a conspiracy, sure. You you believe something. You want to you want to call in? Let's hear it. Definitely uh, call in. Um, people were saying the first caller. People are saying, "Did I hear a cat?" I thought I heard a cat too. I didn't say anything. I should have asked him that question when he was on, because um, he did tell me he was out walking his dog. So it is kind of strange that uh, he said he told me pre-show that he was walking his dog, yet I clearly heard a cat. So maybe that guy's full of it. Nathan from Cincinnati just didn't want to let us know he was walk, walking his cat. Um, one eight three three seven zero three zero four two four. Um, I'm gonna give four more minutes, and if no one wants to call, we'll end this one early. Uh, go right into a shareholders meeting for the last ten minutes of the show. It's totally fine by me. This is a fan driven show. Um, I'm taking your calls. I got nothing else to talk about. I've read my two stories. Uh, I'm looking for calls, so please. Uh, one eight three three seven zero three zero four two four. Uh, call in. Uh, long time listeners to the show. Well, thank you, uh, Zapala and your wife. I appreciate that. If you know people with stories, please get them, tell them Thursday night, 6 p.m. They got to call in. Um, I want to, I want to try to grow this show. I mean, we'll, we'll talk about more of uh, my thoughts and, and what we can do, uh, what my thoughts are. And I'll get your guys' input of where we, uh, of where we can go um, and where we can move this thing. So, um, we've got three more minutes before we uh, shut it down. So one eight three three seven zero four seven zero three zero four two four. Um, let's get a call on the line. Come on, I want to hear that. I want to hear that phone ring. And uh, we just got a donation from. Thank you to. See, hold on sorry i didn't have it open i can see you donated um oh awesome guys thank you uh joshua sent in 20 dollars, and uh clayton back to back supporting the show thank you so much um that really helps uh i mean we'll get into uh we'll get into uh what we're gonna do um hey papa taco 1-833-703-0424 Call in. Let's walk through it. If you don't like how you sound, I will cut it from the show. Um, but I, I want to hear the story. Let's go. You got a great story. Let's hear it. Don't be shy. I'm easy to talk to. Come on here. Let's. I want to hear it. And like I said, if you don't like it, I'll, I'll cut it. I'll cut it from this live stream so no one else will ever see it again. And I'll, I won't add it to the podcast version of the show if, if you don't want. But... Uh, one eight three three seven zero three zero four two four. Don't tease us like that. Don't tease us like that. You got to call now. Papa Taco, I need you to test the line. I, I'm not even sure the line's working anymore. To be honest, I think there was an issue. I need you to call in just to make sure the line's working. So if you can, if you can go call in one with the sauce, I'll call in next week with a funny story. I want to hear it. I mean, we got we got ten minutes. If I don't get a call in two minutes, we're gonna shut this down. I'm gonna shut the lines down. We're gonna go into a shareholders meeting. And I, I want you guys to all stick around because this is your show, so you're gonna have input on on uh, where we move this thing. But I mean, this is gonna be a short pod version uh, if we don't get another call, which is fine. I mean, can't I can't make you call, but uh, the the goal is to get more people calling in every week. So, um, the pal thinks. You'd be starstruck. Yeah, you don't have to be starstruck here. Uh, easy show to call. one 703 Yes. Welcome to Cosmic Channels. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Plymouth, Minnesota. Perfect. Hey, can you can you do me one favor and just turn off the live stream? Oh, yeah, yep. Just because it gives an echo. It's a little bit behind. And then one more time, yeah, what's uh, your name? Where are you calling from? Calling from uh, St. Paul, Minnesota. Beauty. And what do you got for us? If you don't, you don't have to give your name. I'll just call you Jason Bourne. Uh, what do you What do you got for us tonight? Um, I don't mind. My name is Michael. Um, I'm ultra stoked on Instagram, but uh, it's like a one of those uh. What is it called? 
uh, sleep paralysis stories. All right. <laughs> I'll allow it. I'll allow it. I said I'd let one. I said I'd let one go through, so you're the one tonight. Let's hear it. Okay, okay. Definitely freaked me out, and I've had them, like, it happened a lot of times. Uh, but, like, I never sleep on my back. I, I tell everybody to do that. Don't sleep on your back because that's what, that's what always happens to me. That's what the anyways, demons want? I don't know. For me, anyways, it's like when I sleep on my, when I sleep on my back, they come for me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyways, so uh, this is in my, my dad's old place in a, on the other side of the state. But um, so I'm like <clears throat> laying on our uh, sectional downstairs and it's like, you know, a big couch, and there's an ottoman piece in the middle, and I'm just kind of, like, sprawled out sprawled out across the whole couch. Yeah. And um, I was laying on my stomach, so I thought I was in the good. I thought I was all right. <laughs> I was like, all right, call it a night. So anyways, I'm sleeping, right? And uh, I'm, like, falling asleep. So what happens is uh, the, sleep paralysis happens, the sleep paralysis happens, and uh, I'm, like, freaking out because I hate that when it happens. It's, it's a really weird feeling I, anybody that's happened. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've never had it happen. So f- just quickly touch it. Like, is it just you're just, like, actually paralyzed from everything other than your eyes? Like, that's kind of my understanding of it. Yeah, it's the weirdest feeling. I, like, it, it happened to me when I was really young, and it, it always happens randomly. It could happen, it could happen any night. But um, <clears throat> it's, like... It's like you're you're getting really tired, and, and all of a sudden, your body falls asleep before your consciousness does. So it's like you're like, oh my god, I can't move, and you're you're like awake inside your body. And uh, they say like how to get out of it is like you gotta wiggle your big toe or whatever, or like you gotta get like a little part of your body to move, and then you can kind of shake yourself out of it um, back to like you know wake your body back up, anyways. Yeah. So um, yeah. It's weird. It's weird, man. Like, it's happened to me, like I said, from when I was a kid until, you know, it could happen any day. So, <clears throat> like I'm saying, I was laying on the couch and uh, on my stomach, sprawled out. <laughs> and uh, it was so weird because uh, usually they just, like, grab my shoulders. Or they're like, uh, it just feels like somebody's grabbing your body. It's a really uncomfortable feeling. Yeah. You're, like, your body falls asleep and then it feels like you're getting grabbed. It's really weird. Anyways, uh, I, okay, I'm like passed out, my body falls asleep, but my consciousness is still awake, and I can, it almost feels like you can like see them in your room, or you can like feel the presence of this like uh, spirit, or like shadow person, or whatever, you know, there's a lot of different terms for these, this whatever this thing is. Whatever or they if are. It's, if it's just like, uh, yeah, I don't know if it's like, who knows what it is, anyways. So it's like walking up behind me <laughs> and uh, I don't know, man. This is like the craziest time that ever happened to me. It, it like literally went up and yanked on my nutsack. <laughs> 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 yeah, that doesn't sound that bad. <laughs> how, how, how hard was this? <laughs> Bro, it, it, was, it was painful. I was, I was freaking out. <laughs> I was, not, I, I was not prepared for this when you said that was the worst experience I've had. I'm like, all right, that doesn't sound. Like, I mean, I, I guess, I guess, getting sexually assaulted by some sort of spirit from another realm is. I shouldn't be laughing. <laughs> Sorry, you're a victim here. You're a victim of spiritual sexual assault. Right. My apologies. I'll right. take it serious. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate. It. I appreciate. It. Yeah, I was. I was. I was like, this is this is different than it's ever been. This is not good. This is... <laughs> and. Uh, I, got out of it right away and it was it was a crazy feeling and i literally like <laughs> literally spun around sat up and looked in the room and i was like what no way just just full <laughs> torque huh <laughs> just rock hard <laughs> bro i i, I was it, 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 it messed me up and uh i was up for like at least another half an hour or an hour or so yeah <laughs> Oh, that's Freaking funny, dude. That's really funny. Uh, I I think you're the first person to ever tell me a sleep paralysis story where you were sexually assaulted. So thank. That's a first. Uh, I don't even know. You call it. You got. I guess you call it Ghostbusters on that one. I guess you got to report that to somewhere. 
what do you like what do you think these things are though i mean all jokes aside that like you know a lot of people experience this <laughs> phenomenon like what is your take on it as an experiencer of it like wh what do you get from do you think it's something just in your head of being vulnerable or are these things spirits do they have a mind of their own what are your thoughts i would say wait one sec then my dog out. um i would say for my my more like not necessarily sane i guess you'd say sane option an option that would be um believed by more you know just not so far out there i guess you could say um I would say something to do with like just uh, human psychology when you're going to sleep and uh, your body shutting off and then maybe it just has something to do with your, I don't know, your body falling asleep. I don't know. That's like, that's like what the, <clears throat> it's just like weird. It's just, to, it's just weird to me without, that it's like in that situation when your body falls asleep before your consciousness, the first thing your consciousness does is like, and let's create demons out of thin air. <laughs> like, like it's such a I insane. It, that's such an insane response to that. Like that certain event to me, where you're like, like danger. <laughs> like you know what I mean. Like ultimate danger. Right. That's so weird. But maybe that's part of flight or f like fight or flight response. Is that your your body knows that you're now vulnerable, so it's trying to get you out of it. But what a weird fucking way of doing okay. that. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Like, I'm just, I'm right, just right, right. based on what you, because I'm still in the camp of like, this is when the fucking spirits know you're vulnerable and they come and fucking yank on your nuts. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. It's the last thing you'd ever think to ever happen to anybody. Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking um, terrifying. So that's what the same, that's what the same part of me thinks. So I'm not this, I, can't, I, can't, I, don't know why, I don't know why I keep saying that. It's just like the rational. Yeah. Part now, what's the, what's the irrational side of you think? Yeah. Okay. So, I'm pretty into this kind of world and this stuff, and I've been watching you guys' show for, for at least five years now, and uh, love the show. You guys keep doing it, keep killing it. But anyways, I'm pretty into this stuff, so I would say, from my perspective, it really seems like you're when you're going to sleep, your 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 brain waves are changing from you know whatever brain wave frequency it is when you're fully conscious. To, like near you know, ram kind of thing sleep. yeah right right so i think that first layer of whatever frequency your body your brain waves are changing to you're on like a different parallel or like frequency that other spirits are on and that's like the uh, purgatory or like you know i'm not sure if it's the astral realm or whatever but that's kind of what i am drawing a conclusion from because it just seems it's when it when it happens it, it just feels very like an actual experience versus it being like i don't know it's really hard to explain but it it just feels real yeah even though you're like half asleep half awake um well i mean so i don't know I'm not, it's one of those things where i'm like i kind of want to experience it for myself so i can kind of weigh in better on like what i thought because i've only heard other people's but at the same time i'm like it does sound terrifying so i'm like i don't really want it to happen i'm kind of torn so it's 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 it's, it's, it's fascinating it's a, it is a fascinating thing i don't condone it yeah um hey man <laughs> thanks thanks for calling in um saving the end of the show here of uh, i'm gonna let you go and i'm gonna make time for one more caller if he wants to come in but thank you for uh you know being brave enough to come and share your sexual assault story uh with uh, yeah. all the cosmic channelers so i appreciate that yeah, I figured it'd be a funny one. That every time I, I think about it, it makes me crack up. And I'm like, good. man, if I tell people about this, they, I wonder what they would think. Yeah, good. Well, I think it's I think it's uh, hilarious. So, uh, hopefully, you've opened yeah, a door for awesome. more more people to uh, uh, share their. Uh, <laughs> you know, if they've been sexually assaulted by ghosts or aliens, they will no longer fear calling into the show. <laughs> thanks to you. Yep, yep, yep. I hope more people give uh, the show a call. Uh, yeah, that's only second yeah, ep welcome. second it's episode Ken. back, so I'm sure we'll get we'll get the ball rolling here. Thanks so much for calling. Yes, sir. You guys have a good one. You too. Uh, just like that, the lines are open now. I've left this. We'll do one more pop a taco. If you want to call in, this is this is bonus. If you want to call in, share your story. Uh, you can tell me after if you want to cut, and I will cut it. Um, one eight three three seven zero three zero four two four. Um. 
I'll give you a couple minutes here. Uh, or just let me know in the chat you don't want to. We'll go right into the shareholders meeting. I'll end this episode and we'll end uh, we'll end this meeting or, or end this Cosmic Channels. Uh, let me know. I'm just waiting for you. Wait for you. You teased us. I want you to call. You teased us in the chat. So one eight three three seven zero three zero four two four. 703 Give you one minute here. Let's see. If not, there's always next week, which is all good. Um Okay, before the before we end there. All right. Um all right. Well, I'm going to end this cosmic channels. Um with that, the cosmic chan the cosmic lines are officially closed for the night. But um that I have you all here again, I've said it numerous times. Uh this is the fan show. Um so Every everything that we make, I'm, I'm, I'm motivated to grow this show. So you know we're gonna take directions from you guys on what we want to do and stuff. So let's go over, let's go over the numbers. Let's look at the numbers together today. Um, with Cosmic Channel so far, right now, you know we have a couple things that we can invest the money in. I think we have, uh, we have a hundred and thirty one dollars. Um, to the show uh i will well i will um the theorists will uh cover the the minutes for a while until uh we can't but for now uh we'll put all this stuff back into the show so here's what i'm thinking um there's a couple options we have um one which i think is might be the best option from just a podcaster standpoint is that um restream uh, .io, .io allows me to stream to multiple sources. Right now, I'm just on the basic, so I can only stream to a single YouTube and a sh single like Twitch. Um, if we unlock the next version, let me just look at the next version. I, I, I maybe I spoke at a turn. I don't know if we, even know if we can afford it yet, but let's let's look. Um, Mm, maybe we can we can almost we can almost afford it but i would i would splurge and then make it back that would allow us to that would allow us to stream everywhere which is one of the things is uh we could stream to facebook which is, has a big following um so then you know that is allowing more eyes on the show uh secondly uh, we could invest the money to update the lines so then we could um, you know have some some callers be able to be on hold again um, that's pretty cheap but I just I don't know if that's really beneficial um, or we could use the money some of the money for ads but at this point I'm I, I don't know if that's gonna be beneficial but I will do what kind of this consensus the fans is um, the other thing is, what is Bandito saying? <laughs> um, no, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that because I'll, I'll I'll cover it. We have we have. I'm doing the show. I'm just hoping we can grow it as a community because it's your guys' show. You guys call in. I am just facilitating the calls. Um, I think I think we can afford the restream because I did see when I was doing it before. There's a nine ninety nine a month package. So hold on, let me just check. So at nine ninety nine a month, uh, and this is never going to make the podcast. This is just all for the shareholders that come and hang out on the live stream. Um, that would be one hundred nineteen dollars. So we can afford the restream year. That's a year of restream package because you have to pay for it for a year, and that would give us up to five streaming. We can stream to five different places, um, but then the coffers are empty, right? That's the, kind of the only downside, you know. But what else are we saving for at this point? Um, the other thing is, this used to be Sundays. Um, and is it pal? I see you saying set alarm forever Thursdays. I do right after the show. I make like the following weeks. So I think if you're subscribed to Big Theory or this or on Twitch, you can you can, it'll it'll notify you every Thursday. I think now how how are I I personally think this is a good time. Um, you know 
I want to know though if you if what do you guys think? What are some any any we got two episodes in and the other thing is I'm kind of hoping next week is a little bit bigger bump. We had more people watching this week than we did last week, which is awesome. Um if you're watching this and you're wondering, "Hey, how do we support the show? How like, you know, if you don't want to help financially, that's totally fine." Um we're on Instagram Cosmic Channels, we're on TikTok Cosmic Channels. Uh there's a Cosmic Channels own YouTube. Go and subscribe to these things. Like and repost the posts, send them out to your friends. Um, and also tell your friends about the show. Like if, if they got stories, convince them to call in. Um, so I'm looking for any kind of feedback. What other, what other things do you guys think? Anything I could change? How is it listening to the live? Uh, you know, I want this to be your guys' show. You guys have input. So I'm, I also want to know what, like what your thoughts are on it. Right. So. Um, let me know in the chat. Um, one with the sauce says, uh, let's keep her going boys. I bet we could blow the show up. That's what I'm hoping. That's what I'm the, my hopes is with this. I've always thought it's a really cool idea. I love coast to coast. I love calling shows. Uh, I love hearing people's weird stories. Um, so I always thought this was a really cool idea and it just for, you know, whatever reasons we just, it just kept fizzling out and, um, I always thought, you know, I was I always thought that we were like, you know, maybe just one or two away from, you know, getting onto something. Because uh, one of the things that I thought was maybe we needed to do it weekly because the biweekly was people forget, people forget quickly. It's you, you get in a routine, then you're you're kind of in a routine. But um, the other thing is, right now I have this show, so this podcast version of this show will uh, release on next thursday so i have it like thursday morning release and then because then it also i thought gives ads to the show um uh first time actually chatting during the stream but been listening for a while definitely coming back now that i've got time thursdays are working for me thanks Zipal. uh oh, holy shit well we can afford a bunch dude that guy just Zipal just he funded the show for on restream for a year if that's what we were choosing to do Holy crap. Thank you for that. That's un that's incredible. Um, wow. Bravo. Thank you, man. That's, f that's your first, uh, super chat on a live stream. Cheers. That is phenomenal. Thank you so much for that. That's, uh, now we have $231 to work with everyone. So we got, <laughs> I mean, what are the thoughts? I mean, I, I don't want to make the executive decision, but that's what I'm hoping with is that, you know, we go restream first, we get that subscription because then I can also stream it to, you know, 5,000 of our Facebook uh, followers and, you know, Instagram as well, kind of everywhere. So that's uh that's legend. That's a legendary. You definitely spot. I'll give you a huge shout out uh, during the next show. So thank you for that. Um, oh, put the live email on. So I could 100% do that. Um do live reads as long as you keep it short. Like how I, I try to pick through, there's a couple stories that people have sent in that are really long and I've kind of shied away from, I think the first story I read today is kind of like the max, I max kind of length I like to read, but I have been toying with the idea of pre-reading, uh, some of those. Um, so cheers. I th thank you. For, uh, thank you for again for that. Uh, so thoughts, everyone. Bandito saying restream, but I mean I'm open. I'll I'll run ads, um, but I think I think the best course of action personally would be first restream, um, so we get more eyes on the product, uh, then upgrade the lines, uh, then maybe you, you know I'll let you guys pick. I'm I'm making reels out of all the show, and we guys can pick the best reels, and we'll just we'll just you know, put some ad revenue behind those ones to try to spread it. So, um, I'm, I'm hoping, uh, I think that's the, that's the growth, no ads. Um, I don't have a choice on the no ads on the podcast version, but maybe I do. I don't know. I don't know if I can or not. Um, but yeah, there's, there's already reels on, uh, from last week's episode on, on our uh, TikTok and Instagram. So go and share those, send them to your friends. 
Um, I'll bust all these ones up. Um, and how are we thinking for Thursday morning podcast release? What do you guys think about that? Like, uh, so the podcast version would come out at like, I, I think I have it coming out at 2 a.m. on Thursday. My thought process was that people, you know, if you're subscribed to the podcast, you get a notification. The first thing I say is we record these live Thursday and you're like, hey, it's Thursday today. So that was my thought process. But if, if anyone thinks there's a better day to release the pod version, I'm open to it. So I see Bandito says restream. 86 Cletus says restream. Um, one with the sauce says this show is honestly super underrated and you all know it. It is underrated. I think it's a, I think it's a, it's a cool idea. Um, let's get one more, one more person in the chat vote restream and we'll, uh, I'll make sure that's signed up and paid for, uh, for next week. So if we can, uh, just one more in the chat, agree to that. And then I think we'll, I think we'll go by consensus of the first three, um that's uh that's a going okay so next let's look at the numbers three for restream zapal zapal honestly you get you get with that tip today you get your executive so you get the he just made the executive decision restream it is okay so i'll sign us up for restream secondly let's look at the numbers um i will do this every week i want to be fully transparent with everyone uh, so we can help grow the show. I want you guys, the fans, to be invested because we're growing this together. You guys are the cosmic shareholders. Um, our Instagram currently has 143 followers. Um, and that is... I can't open the last post. I had a post. That's up. I think we are at 109 uh, last week. Let's check. Yeah, 109 at the beginning of last week. So that's up quite a bit. I, I mean, the more numbers we get on that, the better. Um, our TikTok, we had one follower last week. And this week we have, let's see here. We have, our TikTok has, oh, I don't, my trailer here is like a little Faraday cage. I can't get anything. We have 12 followers. You know, that's up, but I'd like to see that number a little higher. Um, our YouTube has 400 and... 403 subscribers and then let's look at the numbers from the pod release this morning um obviously the show was dead in the water for a while so you know i'm not i'm not putting too much stock in the listenership right now um we'll worry about just kind of getting those numbers up um i'll read this and i see someone saying something about the font color give me one second and i'll um Okay, so our podcast numbers are looking like this. So for last week's episode, that was the first episode back up. Um, we are at, um, I mean, 200, 283 downloads um, and 264 listens. So, you know, like, you know, just over 500. And, I, and again, I'm not putting much stock in that because the, we haven't released one in forever. I think the last one, it was almost a calendar year ago. So it's like people have fallen off and I'm subscribed. So it, I, I don't hold a lot of stock in that, but I do want to see that number go up. So hopefully uh, next week, we're looking at more than, you know, download more than uh, 283 downloads and 264 listeners. Um, okay, let's go back to the chat here. Um, one thing hillbilly is saying one thing uh, the names in the chat are hard to see font color just got back oh, font color oh the blue okay well let's uh give me some i think i can change that on the fly give me some colors here what what color are we thinking here um just add numbers we can hire a bot farm yeah you know what though the thing with bot farms is a lot of times people use bot farms and uh, for downloads for podcasts and stuff to try to grow their podcast. But the biggest thing that happens is when you do that, um, you actually get blacklisted on like Apple podcasts and Spotify. Like y y it doesn't really always work for you. Um, okay. So I'm just signing in here to uh, change this. I think this is 
Okay, here we go. Go to dashboard. All right, so we want the chat box color. Um, alert box. Super chat. Where is that? Chat, chat, chat. Uh, chat, chat box. Purple. Okay. Um, hmm. I don't know why it even goes blue, to be honest. I'm not seeing anything that changes that. Chat delay, theme boxed, but, um, oh, and put a link up. That's a good idea. See, these are the things. This is why we need feedback from you guys. I'm an idiot. Um, show viewers platform icon, um, enable better. I'm trying to think, I don't see, I don't see this is interesting I don't think uh, I don't think I can change this show subscriber it just shows blue like I don't know why but it shows other people like it shows that it should show your colors in different fonts maybe you guys can change the fonts because it shows that on the like test thing that there's pink, there's red, but I don't have an option to change that. So that we might be stuck with for now. I'll look, I'll dig into that and see if I can't fix that. I saw another thing. Uh, and I'll say again, I watch on the phone, so I can't use QR. The link, the link, that's a good idea. See, these are the things. Um I could I, I could change the photo. Like, does that work better? Like, if I just even just slide it over. But I kind of like the centered. But I don't know. It's up to you guys. What do you think? I can change the photo too. I'm not I'm not married to anything on this show. I'm only married to doing it. That's it. Um, where is there? Oh, okay. Okay. Um, let's see what the link is gonna be. Okay, I think I can do that too. So I'll add the link. Okay. Uh blue because of the photo, but I yeah, I don't I can't change that stream box that color. So it's unfortunate. Okay. Um so I think we've got it sorted. I'm going to sign cosmic channels up for restream. I'm going to see about what I can do with the chat. You know, maybe I'll move this around or figure out something if I can and I'm going to add uh, I'm going to add a little the donate link it's it's going to be like a paypal.me uh, paypal.me um, slash cosmic channels podcast I think that's what it'll be um, change the photo to see if the font well it won't because how what is what is happening is it's I it's two different programs. So I have the chat being plugged in here from uh, Streamlabs. So it's a, it's a separate app. And then on OBS I have a background. So the picture has nothing to do with the chat. Like I can I can move the chat bar anywhere I want. Like I like uh, where's the chat box? Like I can I could with the chat box I I could move the chat box. Like if you see. Like it's nothing is tied down. It's all built in OBS. So I I can I can find a different picture. I think that that's I think that's quite easy. Um, I don't know why I can't change that though. Um, I didn't use the timer tonight. I didn't feel I need, had anyone that was running late. So, but I do have that um, to use. I only like to use it sometimes. Um, but. Yeah, this is, yeah, this is just how it is. So, um, I'll add that link. Anything else? Before we uh, sign this one out, no, it doesn't. It doesn't have a default co font color. I, I'm, I'm curious as to why, because it shows, it shows people with different colored names, in the. Okay, what if I change this? Clean. What's clean? box what's old school what's chunky 
All right, hold on. Let's see. let's try this. What does that do? All right, chat, come back. Come back, chat. Does that does that make it better? What about that? I reset the settings, so blow up the chat. Oh, there's green. See where where was that before? There we go. But see, now it's green. See, now it's green for me, so it's interesting. Is that better? Like, what do we think about that without box? It's on blue better definitely better okay there's let's try there's two other settings let's try the two other settings just to see and we can see so i can get i got i can get rid of the viewer i can get ready to blow up the chat let's let's uh blow up the chat blow it cause every time i change the settings it clears the chat so blow up the chat and let's look at see if we like this and then i'll uh green is hard in the eyes the box is Hello. Okay, so that's here we go. So that keeps it green. Let's try if I go old school. Let's try old school. Keep keep blowing up the chat. That's terrible. I don't like old school. What do we thought about this? And then we can do Is that better? I mean, actually, I can read that quite big, but it's just, it's just, yeah, it's like a 90s video game. Like, if we like that, I'll leave it. Like, I mean, I can read it pretty good. And there's this one, too. I'll change it to one less. This is called the just Twitch. But that goes back to green. The green was easier to read. Yeah, so I think, I think uh, Chunky. I think that one. I think uh I think Chonky, eh? Yeah, Chunky. I think Chunky's the way. Okay, so we'll leave it at that. Um and I'll change like every week I'm going to change the background above. Um so if someone wants to send a background that they want to see used, um yeah, let's leave it at that. I like this. It's easy to read. I think it still looks clean. Uh, if if you want to ever submit a picture to be, that I use above, uh, go ahead. Um, thanks, everyone, for participating in the stream. Um, you know, tell your friends. Hopefully, at the shareholders meeting next week, we're, uh, we're looking at increasing numbers. So uh, take care, everyone. Keep those eyes on the skies. And uh, that's it for Cosmic Channels tonight. Take care.